I'm looking at the latest betting lines. This, according to DraftKings, uh, UConn is still the big favorite to win it all, followed by Purdue, and then NC State and Alabama are a distant third. The uh, point spreads, NC State getting nine against Purdue, Alabama getting 11.5 against Connecticut. We'll have a play of the day, poll question, stat of the day, all of that forthcoming. I think it was last week that uh, Mike Greenberg on the mothership talked about how good UConn is and that UConn could make the playoffs in the NBA. And he later backtracked after he realized that it was a silly comment and said he was just joking. So I wasn't joking when I reached out to DraftKings and I said, hey, let's come up with a betting line, this Connecticut team versus the Detroit Pistons. I'm going to let you guys decide what you think that point spread would be So DraftKings decided they would come up with a point spread for me if the UConn men's team played the Detroit Pistons. Now, we didn't factor in where they would be playing, if it's at, you know, Connecticut, if the Pistons are going to be playing at home. Let's say a neutral site. Pistons are the worst team. Marvin, I'm going to start with you. The point spread that uh, Connecticut and Detroit would be. How many points do you think the UConn Huskies would be getting? 50 and a half. 50 and a half. All right, Paulie? 14 and a half. 14 and a half. Seton O'Connor. This is mm, 21 and a half. All right, Todd? 17 and a half. According to DraftKings, the Pistons would be listed as a 45 (laughs) point favorite. (laughs) What? What? (laughs) 45 and a half or 45? Oh, that's straight up. Just 45. Wow. 45. That's why it's silly when we do this. And I, we have Tom Izzo, Michigan State head coach, coming up. I want to ask him, what's the last team that you think could actually compete against an NBA team? And I don't know how long ago do you go back and say that team was good enough, had enough talent that they could play against the worst team in the NBA. Because the Pistons aren't very good or the Spurs aren't very good. Imagine if the Spurs, as bad as they are, played against the Connecticut men's team. Okay? We get caught up in this. And, and I know maybe Greeny's just trying for a hot take there because, you know, you get intoxicated being on those shows that you got to have a hot take. I truly believe that Greeny meant it and then realized that, oh, it does sound silly. But that's DraftKings. And all they're trying to do is have a betting. They, they're not invested emotionally in, into this. They're just saying if these two teams met, that the Pistons would give 45 points to Connecticut. They're being objective. You know? But I wonder, is there a team, can you think of a team that was talented enough where you'd go, all right, that might be a little more interesting here. Yes, Marvin? On the football side, I think of the 01 Miami Hurricanes. Yes. They had tons of of NFL talent on yes. the field. Tons of NFL talent as backups. Yes. That's as talented as we've probably seen in recent memory. But basketball-wise, is there a team, a school, that you think could compete, stay in the game against the worst basketball team? Todd? Kareem Walton, any of the UCLA years? One of those teams that could Well, they weren't together. Or, or like whatever the best UCLA team under John Wooden would be. I, I think only because of Kareem and how great he was. But, I mean, he had Lucius Allen, who played in the NBA. You had Mike Warren, who was a really good shooting guard as well. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a great team. They just had Kareem, and uh, you know that could be the difference just about any night out. Even with Walton, Walton had some NBA players. Uh, you know, Dave Myers was a really good player. Uh, Larry Farmer was a really good, but but they weren't great players. So I I guess I would say UCLA, you could factor that them in. Yes, Marvin. I'm just going off of NBA talent. This team didn't even go to the Final Four. The Demarcus Cousins, John Wall, Kentucky team, were Eric Bledsoe and Patrick uh, Patterson. Yeah. Okay. But once again, you're that's a young team too. But then the Pistons are young as well. The Pistons are probably the same age as uh, you know that Kentucky team. What about the national championship Kentucky team with Anthony Davis? Would they – I'm trying to think who else was on that uh, roster when they won the title. Do you remember, Marv? 
Who else uh, AD had? Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Okay. I'll give you a bloop on that one. The Harrison Twins, maybe? They didn't make it to the NBA. I don't know. They were good players, but once again, the guys who were in the NBA are really good. They may not be, a, you know, team might not be good, but you are playing against the best players in the world. Yes, Seton. That's why these these discussions are so stupid. They're fun, <laughs> but they're so stupid because you're you're taking a college team and playing against a team where literally every single player is good enough to play in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, because they're in the NBA. Because they're in the NBA. <laughs> they're good enough to play in the NBA. They're, it, yeah. Well, the audience can help out with this, but I, I'm curious if, Mike, even Georgetown with Patrick Ewing, I don't know if they were a great team. I mean, Freddie Brown... Michael Graham, you know, when Sleepy Floyd was there, but trying to figure out, you know, I I would say the Houston team that had Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler, that was really good, but they didn't even win the national championship. So I thought it was funny. Well, I thought it was interesting to find out exactly what Vegas would think of this. And then DraftKings said, and I go, wait, I think you put down 45 point spread. And they said, Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah, Paulie. I'll throw out the 82 North Carolina team with James Worthy, Sam Perkins, and Michael Jordan. Uh, Perkins and Worthy were upperclassmen. Jordan, I know he was young, but that, that's one that popped in my head from a talent standpoint. Okay. And maybe the UNLV team with Larry Johnson, uh, Stacey Stacey Augman. Augman, Anderson Hunt, Greg Anthony. That, for one night... That team could swarm people. Okay, how about this? LSU, 1989, Mahmoud abdul Rauf, Shaq, and Stanley Roberts. Okay. Like, you got my attention there, because Mahmoud averaged, I think, 28 a game. But, you know, Shaq wasn't Shaq. He was a freshman. He averaged 14 points. Stanley Roberts uh, averaged 14 points. But I think it'd be, it would be fun to try to come up with a team if I said Duke with Grant Hill, Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley, who else they have? Thomas Hill in there. Brian Davis was he in there as well. Does that sound right? Don't sleep on Eric Meek in the post. Eric Meek's in the post, yes. Uh, anybody else you throw in there, Marv? It's hard because there's always only like three NBA players. Yes. And then you need them to play against five NBA players. Yes, That's true. always the issue. <laughs> That's true. But you got Coach K, you know, coaching you there. Yes, Paul. You saw this team, the 76 Indiana team, Kent Benson, Tom Abernathy. Uh, Scott May. Quinn Buckner. Those those guys weren't Hall of Famers. Bobby Wilkerson. That's a lot of talent, though. That was a, that was a great team. Great team. And they stayed. They were juniors and seniors, I think, for the most part, with uh, Bob Knight. And they went undefeated. Yeah. So Scott May... Uh, didn't really have a great NBA career. Kent Benson played for a little while. Quinn Buckner played for a while. Bobby Wilkerson, uh, he got drafted, I think, maybe by Cleveland. He was a good player. Abernathy was the sixth man. I think he was drafted by Golden State, maybe in the second round. But, yeah, I think it's it's interesting to think about that. But then when you factor in reality, which is what DraftKings is doing, all they want to do is get it right. Like they don't care who's winning by how much uh, from the standpoint of, oh, they're going to get blown out. They're going to get embarrassed. Oh, they're going to be more competitive. They're just setting a betting line there. And it's uh, UConn getting 45. Yes, Marvin. Can you imagine how angry the Pistons would be coming out? Like, wait, you guys think they could be on the floor with us? And Cade Cunningham would go for 60 and 30. Well, I don't know about that. I'm sorry. 40 and 25. Okay. Okay. 